in this class we will uh, discuss about the different kinds of relationships between classes in object oriented analysis and design so the different kinds of relationships in that you have in object oriented programming are inheritance composition and aggregation association then using helper classes and instantiation with generics so let's go into each of these so inheritance basically allows a class to reuse features defined in another class so the class that you are inheriting from is called as a base class or super class or parent class and the inheriting class is called as a subclass or derived class or child class and subclasses can add more attributes and methods and there is an easy relationship from the subclass to the superclass object so every subclass object is is a uh, is a base class object as well and then you can have different kinds of uh, inheritance hierarchies as you model all the classes in your application so when you go down the inheritance hierarchy it is called a specialization so you are going to more special uh, specialized cases of your classes and when you are going up you are it's called as generalization where you are going go, going towards more generic versions of your classes so attributes or methods which are common you try to move up the hierarchy and attributes and methods which are specific to a certain class you try to put it in classes which are lower down the hierarchy so let's look at an example like uh, here i have the hierarchy class hierarchy for the living being class which is the uh, root of the class hierarchy and the triangle denotes uh, inheritance so plant and animal inherit from the living being class and animals so every plant and animal has a easy relationship with living being so plant is a living being and animal is also a living being similarly uh, mammals and reptiles inherit from animal so every mammal is an animal every reptile is an animal and then mammals can be warm blooded or cold blooded so again there is a inheritance from warm warm blooded mammals to mammal and cold blooded mammals to mammals so going up is called as generalization and going down is specialization so the java keywords related to inheritance are extends extends means inherits from so when you say public class plant extends living being that it, it means plant basically inherits from the living being class so whatever attributes and methods are defined in the living being class are accessible in the plant class as well as long as the access modifier is public in the base class then there is a keyword called super it is used to invoke the base class constructor from the derived class constructor so the base class the derived class constructor or the should always have should always invoke the parent class constructor as the first statement in its body and after it has initialized the parent object then it can initialize the attributes of its own object and then you can also invoke like within a method of a subclass you can also invoke a method from any method from the parent class by by saying super dot whatever method name that is defined in the parent class so let's look at some of the properties of inheritance so every subclass object is an object of the base class as well so for example triangle is a shape plant is a living being and from the previous instance like a warm blooded mammal is a mammal a cold blooded mammal is also a mammal and an important thing to realize is inheritance is not symmetric so if a is a b that means if a class object of class a is an object of class b it does not imply b is an a so every object of class b is not an object of class a that's uh, that means it's not symmetric and inheritance is also transitive so if if you have a uh, extending b uh, b and b extending c so if if you have an object then it means an a is a c as well so if you ha have an object of class a which is a b and b is also a c then it means the object of class a is also an object of class c so it is transitive so if you go back to the previous example for example animal is a living being 
and reptile is a mammal. So that means by transitive property, reptile is also a living being. Okay, uh, and when it comes to symmetric property, uh, an object of plant, every plant is a living being, but every living being is not a plant because a living being, a living being could be an animal as well. Uh, let's look at some of the rules related to casting for inherited classes. Let's say you have a class B which inherits from class A. So in Java you will say class B extends class A. And here I am creating an object called lowercase a of type class A and I am assigning it to an object of class B. Though the types are different on the right side and the left side, this is a valid assignment statement because there every B is a A because B inherits from A. As long as there is an easy relationship from the type of the right hand side to the type of the left hand side, the assignment is correct and there is an implicit upcast. But uh, let's look at, uh, let's say we take this object a and we want to assign it to a B but A is not a B though B is an A but in this particular case we know that A is a reference to an object of class B so A the small a is actually looking at an object of class B since we know that in advance we can cast it explicitly and make it a B and now we can access all the attributes and methods of class B in the B object so the downcasting is has to be explicit but when you downcast there is a potential class cast exception let's say here a was not actually pointing to a b it was pointing to a c then when you uh, cast it to a b then you could get a class cast exception at runtime so you should know in advance that when, if you are sure that a is actually holding a b only then you can do the downcast and here I cannot assign an A to a B because there is no easy relationship from the right side type to the left side type. So A is not a B. That is why this is invalid. But every B is an A. That is why this is valid. So let's look at other relationships in O. Uh, then we have a relationship called as composition and aggregation. This implies a has a relationship between classes. So a car has an engine, a laptop bag has a laptop. This indicates a has a relationship. Okay? And there is a subtle difference between aggregation and composition. Composition is more stricter than aggregation. So in aggregation, the component can exist independently of the aggregate object. For example, the laptop can exist independ independently of the laptop bag. So that's more of an aggregation. Whereas if the component cannot exist independently of the comp composite object, then that's composition. For example, if the engine cannot exist without a car, that means there's a composition there. So when you destroy, when in, comp in composition, when the composite object is destroyed, then the component also is automatically destroyed. Whereas in aggregation, if the aggregate object is destroyed, that does not, does not mean that the component is also destroyed. The component can exist independently. And there is another kind of relationship called association. Okay, so if classes collaborate with each other within the business domain, that is called as association. So it can be unidirectional or bidirectional. So if you have two classes A and B, class A may be referring to class B, or class B may be referring to class A, or both may be referring to each other. So if it is both are referring to each other, it is bidirectional. So an example is a customer and teller at a retail bank. The teller can serve many customers. The customer can be can be can approach any teller and get service by the teller. So here they do they talk to each other and do some kind of a business transaction, right? So there is an association there. That's called as an association, and there is a property called cardinality of an association. It it can be like one to one. That means one instance of a class is associated with exactly another instance of a class or it can be one to many or many to many in the above case where about the about the customer and teller 
there is a many to many relationship because one customer can be serviced by many tellers and one teller can service many customers so there is a many to many relationship there and in general while you are programming you can break it break down a many to many relationship into two one to many relationships using a junction class we'll look at an example of this later and in object oriented uh, notation there is also a concept of using a class can use a helper class as a parameter of its of one of its methods or as a local variable it is not the same as association or aggregation so there is no real relationship between the two in in the business domain you it's just that one class is using the services or services is nothing but the methods of another class let's say you in fluid dynamics you are you have a method in the class which calculates the flow in a two dimension in a, in two dimensions so in fluid dy dynamics th there is a when you are calculating the flow in two dimensions you can have you can make use of a class called complex number which has both the real part and the imaginary part and this comp complex number just serves as a helper class there is no real relationship between the two then you have what is called as instantiation in java it is called as generics it is not an object level relationship but it is a class to class relationship so what this means is when the definition of a class remains the same across different data types that means this is a instantiation of generics what that means is let's say uh the the definition of a class is nothing but the methods of the class the definition of the methods of the class is nothing but the implementation of the class and if that does not change if the implementation of the methods of a class does not change based on what it is holding then it is a ideal candidate for using generics for example stack a queue or a linked list or a set they they if they all provide a certain interface and that interface does not change based on what they are holding so you can have a set of uh, integers you have can have a set of animals you can have a set of human beings but the set as an interface it it provides uh, certain methods for for the clients to use and the implementation of those methods does not change based on what it is actually the based on the type of the objects it is holding in that case you can use what are called as generics then let's look at the uml notation for o relationships so the basic notation is for a class right you put put the class name then the, then they put the attributes and the methods so there is a line between the name the attributes and the methods and you can use some signs like plus for public methods hash for protected methods and minus for private methods then for uh, inheritance which is an easy relationship you use a triangle so you have the base class here and then here i'm showing two derived classes so base class or super class or the parent class and here you have the derived class or subclass or the child class so and there is a easy relationship so derived one is a base and derived two is a base here and the triangle denotes inheritance then you have aggregation and composition so for so for both of them you use a diamond okay for aggregation you use a unshaded diamond and for composition you use a shaded diamond okay then you have association so a two classes can be associated with each other so you write the class name a here class name b here and on the left side of this line you write a's role in the relationship and on the right side of this line you write b's role in the re relationship and if it is an arrow it means you can navigate to b from a but you cannot navigate from b to a whereas if you don't indicate arrows it means a can reach b and b can also reach a and i talked about multi uh, cardinality of an association it's also called as multiplicity where 
you specify the numbers okay so if you specify uh, so the way you read that is you indicate the number the cardinality at the left side on the right side of a and the left side of b so here you use uh, expressions like 1 means exactly 1 n means exactly n star means any number 0 dot dot 1 means 0 or 1 if you say 0 dot dot n means 0 up to n 1 dot dot n means 1 or more because star means any number and you can also say n dot dot m it means n through m okay now in this particular case let's say so the way you read this is you say each start is a each a is associated with star means any number each a is associated with any number of what is where does it end b okay each a is now associated with any number of b but each b is associated with 1a exactly 1a so the start means where you with the class that you are starting from so substitute this class with a and substitute with the class b with uh, ends with b and multiplicity substitute with star so you say each a is associated with any number of b's so when you are going from left to right and when you are going from right to left start with each b right is associated with what's the multiplicity here 1 is associated with 1 and it ends at a so you say each b and each b associated with exactly 1a and when you go from left to right it is each a is associated with any number of b's so you can put any of these cardinality on the left on the left side or the right side and it and the meaning can be and you get the meaning by going through this okay so I'll give you some assignments on modeling some objects using this notation Where is my, how do I stop it? <laughs> what?